holy shit guys sometimes i'm disappointed with love i thought that when you were in love it would always be right there staring you in the face reminding you every moment that you love this person it seems that it isn't always like that sometimes i know that i love jamie but i don't feel it and i wonder what it would be like to be with someone else i love him the most when we fight and i'm scared that he'll leave me after we fight, I want so much to be close to him and the next day I want his hand in mine every minute. Sometimes he loves me more than I love him and he wants me to pay attention to him, but I wish he'd leave me alone so that I could go back to reading or talking to Angie about Miss Adams. Sometimes we both love each other a lot and it's hard to hang up at night. I wish it could always be like that. So I'm currently on page 163 of If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nowlin. Also, I'm having some dental problems and like my mouth really hurts. Uh, anyway, this is a young adult romance, which I don't typically read, but this one has really just captured my soul. So we're basically following these two friends and they've been best friends since childhood, Autumn and Finny. And in recent times, they are no longer friends. They've kind of just separated. There's no bad blood really there. It's more of the fact that they're in different friendship groups. They're now in high school. They're just, they've just naturally distanced themselves. And we're kind of following Autumn's grief around losing the friendship, but also she's grieving this idea of that they could have been together as more than friends and we get this we kind of get in the vibe that she is figuring out her feelings for him and that she may be in love with him despite the fact that she has a boyfriend i am absolutely loving this also it's meant to have a tragic ending we know what happens at the end in chapter one it gives us the insight so we're reading the in-between parts of her, you know, coming to terms with this friendship ending. And I'm just hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they sort it out. But I'm on page 163 and whilst they've had interactions, they haven't really mended the friendship or uh, taken a step forward. Because it's kind of obvious that they both have feelings for each other or that they may have had feelings for each other in the past, but they haven't taken any steps forward also i read out a quote in my little b-roll part i think this book does a really good job at talking about the nuances of love there was this part where it really just captured the experience of relationship ocd which i have i have had that i have had that and it's not nice people are always like oh but that doesn't even sound complicated that doesn't sound painful when you love someone <laughs> and you have ROCD, it's literally just like the most painful, sickening experience. And like I've had a lot of different different ones, including harm and ROCD it was my most painful. It was my most painful. So I'm currently on chapter 30 and I just wanna I just wanna share this with you because our girl is bookish. She's bookish and I'm really, really into her. I'm sitting on the back porch, reading after a trip to the library this afternoon. The book is old and has that dusty, musty smell I love. Really over. The author is Irish, probably dead, and someone I've never heard of before today. Relatable. The book is surely out of print by now, and I feel as if I'm holding a lost treasure in my hands. I stop suddenly and I close my eyes. This book is a treasure. I did not suspect it would be so good when I picked it up. How I'm feeling about this book but now I can feel the printed words seeping through my skin and into my veins rush into my heart and mark it forever literally that line just reminds me of like all my favorite books the book thief and the night circus come to mind oh I want to savor this wonder this happening of loving a book and reading it for the first time because the first time is always the best and I'll never read this book for the first time ever I literally constantly have like these little existential crises or breakdowns around like really fucking loving a book but then I finished it and I'm like 
but I'm never going to experience this for the first time again. And am I actually going to fall in love with a book again? <laughs> My brain's so weird. If I love something, it constantly goes to that dark place of, well, this is as good as it gets. That's it. We're never going to love anything again. Make this your whole personality because you're never going to love anything again. I actually have a video on my channel. It's the first video I posted to this channel last year. Or I think it was in 2022, actually, when I started this channel. And it's about all the books that I want to read for the first time again. So I'm going to link that down below because like, I love that topic. I love talking about the books we love so fucking much that we have that yearning not to reread it, but to experience it for the first time again. And I just, I love this character. Like, she's quirky, and I guess, like, according to some Goodreads reviewers, she's annoying. But, like, she's meant to be like that. She is a teen girl discovering herself and, like, going through the motions of girlhood and falling in love for the first time. And, like, teenagers are meant to come across as annoying. At least I was annoying. I still am annoying. <laughs> But like she's exactly the way that she's meant to be and experiencing things exactly the way that she's she's supposed to experience things so like i'm i'm loving that and it's kind of taken me back to like the first time that i fell in love and how uh disappointed i was by it because you know like things like sex and like falling in love it's not it's not how you imagine it at least in my experience like it's not it's just not and like i literally had rocd because of how much of like a romantic i was i genuinely think that's why i developed it because of the propaganda that we're given from a young age about how magical love is and how it's meant to feel this certain way all of the time and my brain just freaked out my brain just freaked out which is just like a common it's a common experience for people that do go on to develop relationship ocd anyway this book is not about relationship ocd but it's making me think about my experience with that and also like my school experience there's this bit where they're um like at war with finney's group and like they're fighting over a table and they're trying to race each other there every day so like our group can have this table because it's our normal table and i could like picture that scene because i'm pretty sure that i've been in that situation and i saw it as my own school cafeteria which is which is interesting um because this book is set in the us but like i feel like i could see it anyway i am gonna read some more i feel like it's gonna be a situation where i finish the book before i come back to you but i'm really enjoying it knew it like i fucking knew it i predicted that out of left field like i knew that was gonna happen it was obvious men and boys because let's be honest a real man doesn't do this shit boys follow this same vibe when they cheat it's like it's so obvious and i knew it was with sasha i just knew that Jamie, Jamie, I was right to not like you. Like, I didn't like you. I didn't like you at all in this book. You are literally the human equivalent of dry, unseasoned fucking chicken with no sauce. That's you. That's you. Like, you have no substance. I don't understand how you got autumn. And I don't understand how you got Sasha. Like... <sighs> This is exactly how I felt about my ex-boyfriend like how are these men cheating what redeeming qualities do they have and you know what it's probably just because they try so hard to be funny they try so hard to be funny like there is no other redeeming qualities and that makes us women look bad it makes us look bad because it makes us seem simple that all they gotta do is make us laugh oh I hate this guy I hate this guy and I saw that come in I saw that come in I saw that fucking come in like that was coming and do you know what it's very obvious when someone is cheating on you like just the way that they would talk in their interactions where she would be like I love you and he'd be like me too I love you 
love you too it's just like it felt really one-sided for a lot of this book and i'm just i knew that was gonna happen like i'm no psychic but i know when a man is cheating like they're obvious and they think they're really smart but y your dreams have exposed them months before they even do it because maybe we are a bit magical maybe <laughs> maybe we are a bit psychic it's late at night can you tell i'm in a bit of a mood but yeah i am just loving this book like whilst jamie is literally trash <laughs> Finally, Autumn and Finney are starting to like repair their bond and it's all starting to make sense again. The world is starting to make sense. But when Jamie goes to break up with Autumn and she's kind of like really struggling with depression, uh, her parents are getting a divorce plus she is in therapy for depression and it seems to be more on like the seasonal side because every time it's winter she is depressed and she's like okay i just need to get through winter but like that was the problem for him the fact that he feels oh she's so needy she's always depressed oh it's not just in the winter you're always like this like i'm breaking he literally says i'm breaking up with you because you're depressed and i'm like that man doesn't love you first of all he's cheating second of all if someone really loved you they would bother to understand your mental health condition and like it's gonna be hard when you're with someone that has a mental illness such as depression like expect it to be hard but you know like on one side <laughs> on one side i understand it because you're not responsible for anyone else and like it is hard to be with someone that has mental health like when i was going through a city I, I thought how is my boyfriend at the time staying with me because he was cheating by the way because he was cheating but like i did feel like i put a lot on him so on one side i understand it but also i'm like don't just come out and say that what the fuck <laughs> But um, Finney is uh, kind of rebuilding her, I guess, just kind of helping her through this. And I think that just is a testament to like the type of guy that he is, like how he is a good soul. Because even though they haven't necessarily had the best relationship in recent times, he is someone that she can rely on and fall back on despite that. That's beautiful. So yeah, I this is going to be five stars i think this will be five stars despite the fact that it has cheating in it which i'm just like not a huge fan of and jamie is bland but like we can just forget about him and just love finn and autumn yeah yeah finally another romance book where i'm actually rooting for the main characters individually and as a couple but they're not a couple but i would root for them as a couple okay over and out so if i can finish i finished i'm giving it five stars laura you're paying for my therapy <laughs> you're paying for my therapy because you made me you made me go through that you made me go through that and it's not okay <laughs> i know a lot of people cry at this book but i i really struggle to um to cry <laughs> But yeah, I never cry at books. I never cry at books. And I didn't cry, but I did tear up. And I was like, oh no, I'm not ready for this. And when I knew what was gonna happen was about to happen, I I had to take a little pause. I had to take a little pause because I didn't want to go through it. I didn't want to go through it. But I am happy with the resolution. This book does kind of end on a bit of a a bit of a weird one. Like we're not entirely sure of what's what's happened you know after the big event how this like concludes is a bit like oh this is open it's kind of up to your interpretation on you know what you think has happened and there is a sequel that is from finn's point of view however whilst i like him as a character like i do prefer the female point of view above all always and also like i don't feel like going through the same pain again in the same book and like having to actually be in 
the situation you know the big thing that happens like from his point of view i don't think i can stomach it i don't think yeah yeah so you know there is a lot of trigger warnings in this book so i would i would look them up i'm struggling to process how i actually feel i'm struggling to give you thoughts i'm struggling to give you thoughts but it was a five star it was a five star and i feel like i deserve to have more five stars in my life because i've read some bad books recently exalted i'm looking at you sorry not sorry <laughs> i'm gonna uh decide on what i'm reading next and then i will get back to you but I feel like I need some time to really process this because that was super sad. So I'm meant to be reading the collected uh, regrets of Clover by Mickey Brahma, but I'm a little bit too depressed for a book like that. It focuses heavily on death and like, you know, commentary around grief and all of that kind of stuff and I got 10 pages in and I think the writing style is beautiful and I think when I eventually do get around to this I am gonna love it but I'm feeling a little bit too depressed for it like that's heavy that's heavy that's heavy on the noggin so instead I decided to read After Dark with Roxy Clark which is a YA mystery book because the YA is just really working for me right now like I forgot how good young adult fiction can be and i guess i kind of just steer away from it now that i'm 25 because i'm like that's a bit too young for me but it turns out that it's just really good for my brain so easy so digestible so with this book it's basically mina and the undead meets a good girl's guide to murder but no mixed media which i'm not upset about because i'm really enjoying this so we are following Roxy. Roxy is described as a weird, introverted, like outcast individual who is obsessed with all things deaf and morbid. Roxy runs like a uh, ghost tour based around her family history and she's very, she's very obsessed with her family's history. You know, she wants to know more and more and more. This spans like a hundred years plus. Um, and in a recent timeline, her sister Skylar loses her boyfriend Colin and Colin was brutally murdered. And at this point in the story, Skylar has been really struggling with depression and she, she once was a honor student on track to go into Yale, but she puts that off because she's grieving her boyfriend. So the sisters decide to work together to find out who did this to Colin because it was never really it was never really sorted out by the police you know just classic murder mystery YA plot when is it ever sorted out by the police otherwise we wouldn't have a book um I am just loving the sisterly dynamics that's something I'm very interested in and a lot of the books I love has that element to it you know whether it's like a really wholesome relationship or it's a strained relationship I'm there for it Roxy and Skylar never really saw eye to eye they didn't have a close bond even before the murder happened so it's really interesting to see them kind of like band together and be like no that's my sister I I'm here for this I'm here for this we may not have been close but I'm here for this so that is one thing that I'm really loving about this I'm loving the ghost tour aspects I'm just Roxy as a character she's just so like I don't know she reminds me a little bit of Jade from My Heart is a Chainsaw but like not entirely she kind of gives off a little bit of Jade vibes um yeah yeah <laughs> what can I say about like 200 plus pages apparently not a lot just just the plot and that I love the sisterly vibes but I have just woken up from a nap so I'm like should I be really doing this clip right now? Do I have any thoughts I can put out there? Um, I feel like I know who it is. Obviously, I'm not going to say because that would be a spoiler and maybe someone watching this would want to read the book themselves, which I totally recommend because it is, it's fun. It's fun. 
but um there was one part that i really predicted i was like girl <laughs> girl i know exactly what's in that letter like do not give that to her please don't you're about to ruin everything <laughs> but um you know i was kind of wrong that thing did escalate the situation in a more you know driven and positive direction but yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go watch pretty little liars because i feel a little bit off my rocker and i will update you when i have more to say about this book hi friends it's super late right now it's like 3 a.m and i am not feeling great but i have just finished uh my book it'll come back to me where's the book after dark with roxy clark i gave it four stars I gave it four stars because genuinely I had a really great time reading it. I felt like I couldn't put it down. It's one of those books that's just so quick and immersive. While it's not anything uh, unique or new, and I can't really say that I was surprised by the twist, I just had a good time reading this. Like, you know when you just read a book that's... I don't know, you might forget about it in the future, but at the time it was just easy and digestible, which is exactly what I have been needing to get myself through this mental health slump. Also, I need my eyebrows done. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm gonna get some sleep and then I will figure out what I'm reading next in the morning. Night night. I haven't slept since the last time we talked and it's currently 6.39 a.m. and I've walked my dog. I'm literally never up at this time but I had the biggest nap to end all naps yesterday <laughs> and I woke up at like 9.45 in the, in the evening. So I've been up since then. I've been obviously reading and watching Pretty Little Liars and I'm now ready to update you on the book that I chose. But I am currently reading Icebreaker by Hannah Grace and I am 88 pages in and I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I love how snarky Anastasia is. I love that she's got this like wit where she's like, oh, um, I hate this guy. Where'd she go? <laughs> so basically the plot of this is we are at a university campus and we're following two sets of friends we've got the figure skaters and the hockey players and this huge prank happens or it's like a revenge plot and the hockey team's rink gets destroyed and they basically end up having to share a rink with the figure skaters so they're trying to just kind of get to know each other and learn how to get along to make this situation better because they've got to share this rink and we're following Anastasia and Nate they're the couple of this book they've got a bit of a hate to love thing going on more hate on her side and it's also a reverse grumpy sunshine so she's the snarky grumpy one and he's like the sunshine one that's constantly trying to get her to like him she's having none of it <laughs> just i'm loving it my favorite character so far instantly hands down i fell in love with henry <laughs> henry the neurodivergent kid they can't make me hate you i instantly brought his book which is the new one in the maple Hill series uh it's called daydream that's coming to me today i feel like it's gonna be the next book i read i know there's one in between that that i soft enough like i have intentions to pick it back up and it's russ's story but i'm way more interested in henry so i'm gonna be picking that one up and i don't really care if it spoils the middle book because i literally have more interest in this one and we're like following a bookish girl in that one and i'm pretty sure she's plus size and i'm like yes of course henry is a plus size loving king we love that <laughs> so yeah it's just like a fun romance like hockey romance i never really foresaw myself reading hockey romance but here we are the score didn't work for me wait 
the score it's the first that that really popular one that didn't work for me that didn't work for me so i'm not sorry about it i don't I don't know if this is gonna like be the start of my hockey romance era. I I switch through eras within days, so we'll see. So I'm under this vlog here because I did that thing I always do where I get into a different mood whilst reading a book. Uh -huh. So I softy enough icebreaker. I will be going back to it because I do own the entire trilogy right now. There was, it's still getting a red but I just wanted to outro but I thought like we did really good with this video I got a 5 star, a 4 star and then a soft DNF which was just that's not bad because I'm going to come back to it anyway over and out